few hundred people on a snowy mountain slope. You have a winter sport resort. Most of them come because they love to ski. I was here for different reasons. One, because of the International Women's Ski Meet. The other, I wanted to see a very good friend of mine, Carl Olson. I'd known him long before he'd come to the United States. Carl was operating the hotel ski shop. I hadn't told him I was arriving. I wanted to surprise him. My. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> it's good to see you. When did you arrive? Less than five minutes ago. Oh. You have quite a business here. Oh, yes, it is growing. Americans like to ski. Soon it will be bigger. How are Greta and Lars? Greta is fine, Mike. Married, already two boys. Lars is dead, Mike. Dead? When? Eight months ago, at Strin, Lars missed a turn. He went into a ravine, 2,000 feet. The sun was setting. People said it must have blinded him. I'm very sorry, Carl. I know, Mike. It was then I made up my mind to come to America. With Lars gone and Greta married, there was nothing to hold me. In this country, I'm happy. But still, I miss Lars so much. We'll see each other later. I'll need a couple of sweaters. I'll send sweaters up right away. Go hurry, take your time. Lars had been one of the finest skiers in Norway. It was hard to believe that he was dead. And it was more difficult to believe he'd been killed in a ski accident. But I realized these things sometimes happen. Jeanne Secard, Michael Lanyard. How do you do? How do you do, Monsieur Lanyard? Won't you join us? Sure, thanks. Colette and Jeanne Secard. That means I'm sitting with the probable champions of the tournament. Being highly favored doesn't always mean victory, Mr. Lanyard. In this instance, it does. You know, you could take a lesson in confidence from your captain. It sounds as though you are a follower of the French women's ski team. At one time, a great follower of one member. It's been a long time, Mike. Yeah. How about buying some of the world's best skiers a drink? Excuse me, Mr. Lanyard, but I have an engagement. What engagement? Rick, he came in tonight. I want you in by nine. You're scheduled for the first group in the slalom tomorrow. That is only one hour. And Rick has come so far. Nine o'clock. You'll have to excuse my sister. There was a boy at Lake Placid, a ski instructor. An occupational hazard at resorts. Not always a hazard, Miss Sika. Shanae is my sister. She does as she is told. Bonsoir, monsieur. And René, we might need you tomorrow. You'd better get to bed, too. <laughs> the face of an angel. The personality of a frustrated general. <laughs> Colette's no angel. I want to forget about her for tonight. I want to forget about everyone but us. Hmm? Okay. Renee spent the evening talking about her fiancé, Robert Deschamps. Three o'clock. We didn't obey teacher. Oh, maybe it's not as funny as it sounds. You know, Colette can be most difficult. Renee, why isn't your name listed on the French team? Oh, no talent, perhaps. Well, you're one of the best skiers in Europe. Well, there's no point in discussing it, Michael. As Colette says, I'm lucky to even be an alternate. <laughs> Before the 
the tournament started, I had breakfast with Renee. She was being carried as an alternate in the event a member of the team was hurt. It was late that afternoon when the first phase of the tournament was about over. The French team was trailing, and it was apparent they needed Renee. They needed her badly. Renee was recognized as one of the world's finest women skiers. I watched Marie Dufy, the fourth member of the French team, take off. And it happened. At top speed, she hit the 15th gate. From the looks of Marie's leg, it wasn't hard to see she'd broken it. And I noted something else. Colette's expression showed only disgust. Bringing an injured skier down a mountain slope takes time. It was late when I returned to the lodge. Renee and Jeanne had gone to the hospital with Marie. Colette was conspicuous by her absence. All she bothered to do was list Renee's name as a starter with the tournament officials. I was tired and ready for a hot shower in bed. But someone with the scent of heavy perfume and imported cigarettes was waiting for me. Huh. Find everything you wanted. Everything except you. You are very late. One of your teammates broke her leg. Why had you forgotten? Well, he was very clumsy or it never would have happened. Once up in the Alps, I broke my leg. There were no gallants to give me an escort. I came down on one ski. You know something, baby? I believe you. You're the independent type. Perhaps. I'm not as independent as you think, Michael. You may be the one man who can keep me alive. Why me? Your sister's boyfriend finally decided to assert himself? I am certain my life is in danger. What makes you so sure someone's trying to kill you? Today, just before I took the slide, I noticed my ski bind had been filed almost in two. Had my ski come off in midair, I most certainly would not have survived. Who could have done it? One of two people, my sister, or Rene. Your sister didn't strike me as being capable of murder. As for Rene, it's absurd. A woman's ego, when offended, is a strange thing. I offended both of theirs. Rene, a one time famous skier reduced to an alternate. My sister? Because I forbid her seeing a boy with whom she is infatuated. Both have sufficient knowledge to make death on skis resemble an accident. Uh -huh. Mind if I talk to them? Of course, they will both deny it. Perhaps. Ah, I'm scheduled for the downhill tomorrow at 10 a.m. Let's have lunch at the lodge at 1. Then you can tell me what they said. That was not meant as gratitude. It was because I think you are most attractive. I figured Colette had lied to me, and if only to take her down a peg or two, I made up my mind to find out why. I headed for the finish shack, which was about two miles from the lodge. I wanted to talk to Colette. I was tired of watching her manhandle people's lives, because sooner or later she was bound to cause trouble. We were skiing. The wind came up. We headed for the shack. We found her. Colette Sicard, she's dead. It was a nice, efficient job of murder. There was a hole in Colette's temple made by the sharp end of a ski pole. Renee had told me she'd only kicked Colette. I had to talk to her again. When Sheriff Wade asked me to help, there was only one thing I could say. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I don't know how I could help. I don't quite agree. Some of the skiers remember seeing you with Renée Dubois at the lodge. I thought maybe you had an idea where she is now. Why are you so interested in her? The desk clerk remembers her going into the ski room before dawn this morning with Mr. Card. And it isn't any secret there's no love lost between them. That's no proof of murder. We'll get proof when we find her. Jim, I think Mike is right. I've seen 
Miss Dubois around the lodge. She doesn't seem the type to do a thing like this. It's funny, but a murderer just never seems the type. Stay close, Carl. I may need you. Yes. Carl, who was with you when you found the body? No one. I left the others on the slope. I cut across the east end. I arrived first. What then? Then I entered the shack. At first, I thought she was asleep. And then I saw the blood. When the first skier arrived, I sent him for the sheriff. Sheriff, I just found this in the wood bucket. What happens if it doesn't fit Mr. Bois? There must have been a hundred skiers in here yesterday. Any one of them could have lost it, if it doesn't fit Mr. Bois's pinky. The sheriff had a point. It was beginning to look as though Rene would have to come up with a story deserving of an award, because it was only a matter of time before Wade learned that Rene was the last person to see Colette alive. Getting Rene out of the lodge was no trick. When a skier wraps up in a few sweaters, a Mackinac, plus stocking cap and snow goggles, it's tough to identify them as human, much less male or female. There was a cabin not far from the hotel that belonged to a friend of mine. It was vacant, so I decided to keep Renee there until this whole thing was straightened out. Until I found out whether she had told me the truth. I hoped she had. But Colette could have been right when she said, a woman whose ego is offended could become dangerous. I didn't want to guess. I had to know. What about Colette? Two goals always dominated Colette's life. To have no equal as a skier, and to make sure that every man she met fell in love with her. I was determined not to lose the second man who could make me happy. So, there were scenes, many scenes. And the engagement? Colette lost. Robert and I are still engaged. We were planning to be married as soon as I returned to France. Yeah. Evidently, Colette wanted to prevent your return. She tried to disgrace me by having me relegated to fifth position on the team. And then, this morning she... Oh, Mike. Really? Are you sure that in your anger you didn't take that ski pole? I and... didn't. I swear I didn't, Mike. And someone saw you and Colette out there alone. No one knew. Yes, the desk clerk knew. He saw you leave. But it's unlikely that he'd be interested. Think, who else? I don't know. I don't know. You've got to think. If you didn't murder Colette, someone knew where you were. Think, who else saw you leave? I don't know. When you left, did you turn the light out or leave it on? I don't know. I don't know. Think. <laughs> I... I turned it off. Did you go by the stairway or the elevator? I went down the stairway. I don't know how Colette came down. Wasn't she with you? No. She came down later. Where was Colette? As we were passing Jeanne's room, Colette saw there was a light on, so she went in to have a talk with her. Oh, so that's it. But my... Jeanne was Colette's sister. I don't think they worked at it very hard. Get some sleep, baby, huh? Come on. I want to get back to the lodge first thing in the morning. Oh, Mike. Huh? There was someone else. As Colette and I were leaving the rear entrance from the ski room, I saw someone walking toward us. A man. Did you recognize him? Well, I... I think I would if I saw him again. I started immediately for the lodge. I thought about the glove I'd found. Whoever had lost it could have a frostbitten hand. I wanted to see Jeanne. Yes? Mark Lanyard. I want to talk to you. Just a minute. 
you want to talk to me about? Your sister. There's already been a lot of talk. Seems people don't think I'm showing the proper amount of sorrow for my sister. But that isn't why you came. Not exactly. I'm more interested in why you killed her. What happened to your hand? Just a little frostbite. What are you getting at? You knew where Colette and Rene were going yesterday morning. I have a hunch that mitten found in the shack will fit your hand nicely. You've seen Rene? I've seen her. What about your sister? I had ridden Rick down to catch a train. It was late. I had just returned when Colette came to my room. There was a scene. She slapped me. After she left, I decided to follow her. Have you doubt? Make her give consent to us to get married. I just don't say you didn't kill her. I went to the finish shack and stayed out of sight until Rene left. Colette was all bruised and furious. She ordered me back to the hotel. As always, I obeyed. Uh, how much did you know about your sister's personal life? As much as anyone. Why? Well, the only other logical suspect who could have known Colette's whereabouts that early in the morning was a man Rennie saw as they were leaving. We'd have to find which man here had a motive. We? Where should I help Rene? The only way I can keep her from going to jail is to bring the police up to date on you. You were the last person to see her sister alive. Unless we find that man. Give me a few minutes to finish dressing. Then I will go to the police with you. All I know is, I did not kill her, nor did Rene. I'll wait for you. When Jan said she was willing to go to the police with me, she could have been on the level, unless she was playing it very smart. First, I wanted Wade to hear Jeanne's story, and I wanted to find the man that Rene had seen as she left the lodge. I figured he might be the key. And then, just to disprove that point, everything went black. I had underestimated Jan, and my head ached enough to know that any girl who could hit that hard could easily commit a murder. But I was wrong. Whoever had slugged me gave the same treatment to Jeanne as she came out of her dressing room. She was alive, but she'd be out cold for a long time. Someone had overheard us talking about Rene. I called the desk clerk and told him to send a doctor down to the locker waiting room. I didn't have to be a genius to figure my ski tracks in the fresh snow would act as a road map to the cabin. That was the way it was. My original set of ski tracks and now one more. I hadn't been unconscious for more than a few minutes. Whoever had struck me couldn't be too far ahead. And the other set of ski tracks suddenly went off in a different direction. I started to wonder if I hadn't been taken and if slugging Jeanne wasn't part of a scheme to not only throw me off the track, but to cause me to look for someone else. For the moment, all those answers had to wait. I had to reach Rene. anything new? Yeah, I saw Jan today. I told her I thought she'd kill Colette. She denied it and offered to go with me to the sheriff, get you cleared. Then I'm free. Uh, not exactly. She's lying. I think she did kill her sister. I think someone helped her. Whoever hit me left her there to throw me off the track. It can't be true. She's right, Mike. Jan had nothing to do with it. Cool. I'm sorry about before, Mike. 
I'm sorry for what I'm about to do now. But one thing leads to another. That's not a very good excuse for more murders. I don't want to harm you or the girl, but I... Oh, no, you don't want to harm us. You just want to kill us, is that it? Okay, Carl, go ahead, pull the trigger. Go on, pull it! Why did you kill her, Carl? A year ago, in Norway, Lars was teaching skiing. Colette Sikar was there. He didn't take her long to win him or to destroy him. But his death was an accident. Mike, Lars knew every flake of snow on the slopes at Strin. And she left him for another man. Maybe he was so hurt, he didn't care. But I knew that Colette was responsible. She killed him, Mike. When I left for America, I did so because I knew if I ever saw her, I would kill her. Until this tournament, we had never met. Mike, I think I did right. I'm sorry, Carl. You'll get a fair trial. I'll call you later. Hello, Wade. Hello, Mike. We booked Carl. Yeah, I know. It's only a supposition, but we believe at the time he committed the crime, he was insane. I don't think he'll ever be well again. When is the sanity hearing? Next Wednesday. I'll be in New York. I'll call you. If he needs anything, let me know. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Mike. I just heard you were leaving. Aren't you going to stay to watch the downhill meet today? Can't. Got to get a plane for New York. New York. Mexico. Cairo. No routes. So you decided that a year ago. I know. But I'll miss you. You're going back to France. You'll have a husband to think of, remember? <laughs>